Welcome, Steve Murray, Chancellor of Phillips Community College of the University of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, too. You're an Achieving the Dream College, and you've been recently recognized around your work to do with equity. Can you tell me a little bit about that work and your efforts there? Well, our county, our college serves um, the five county service area. Three of the uh, counties are among the 100 poorest counties in the nation, according to the most recent census. Uh, we serve a community that has a, a reputation for racial division, has had for at least a century. So when we became involved in achieving the dream, we decided that we needed to address uh, those issues of class and race uh, head on very directly. Uh, we, we took a sort of common reader approach. Uh, we we uh, bought every college employee a copy of uh, Ruby Payne's Bridges Out of Poverty, spent a year with conversations around the issues of, of class and the, the characteristics of uh, students who have grown up in generational poverty and how we as an institution could um, change the way that we responded to those um, students. Uh, we we uh, then the second year decided to tackle the issue of, of race. Uh, the, the issues of class and race are, are inextricably linked I think in, in, in our area and really in, in the nation as well. And uh, so we took the same sort of approach, uh, bought every college employee a copy of Nathan McCall's novel, Them, uh, spent a, a year in the same kind of conversations around um, the issue of, of, of race. Uh, at the end of the year, we, we, we understood that you don't resolve issues of um, class and race by uh, simply discussing a novel for a year, even though uh, that's a, a wonderful first step. Um, but we, we wanted to continue those conversations, so we we worked with the Clinton School for Public Service students um, in creating a curriculum that we could use for uh, a, a grassroots, small group, dialogue to action sort of approach to conversations around the issue of race. We piloted that with faculty and staff. We've rolled it out now with our faculty and staff. We are beginning the conversations with our students. I think those conversations are particularly important because um, most of our students have never, until they come to Phillips Community College, they have never been um, in a racially integrated class. Now, that's a little surprising in 2012 in the United States, but that's the reality that we face. And then this, this next fall, our plan is to uh, take those conversations to the, the external community. And it's the sort of thing that we can keep going as long as there are groups of people willing to come together and engage one another in, in civil conversation about, about this issue. I don't think it would have ever happened without our involvement in achieving the dream. Um, we had always been uh, the political and racial neutral ground in our community. We are one of the few institutions whose, whose student demographics reflect the, the uh, county's de demographics. Um, and we had always existed in that racially divided environment by uh, ignoring the issue. Uh, we were the, the, the neutral ground uh, we, we dealt with it by simply pretending that the 600-pound um, bear in the corner uh, wasn't there. And, and if you look at the way that we as a country deal with the issue of, of racism, racism is the only social problem in our country that we think we can make better by ignoring. Every other issue, we think the way to, to begin to resolve it is to get it on the table and talk about it. Racism we want to deal with by pretending that it doesn't exist. So for the 40-year college of the history of the college, that's how we had dealt with that 
that issue and, and survived in a racially divided uh, uh, community. Uh, community colleges see themselves as egalitarian. We're open door. We're the most democratic of, of institutions. So um, if it had not been for the fact that achieving the dream pushed us to disaggregate the data by race and gender and class and begin to look at it in those ways, we would never have, I, I think, begun uh, this journey. And, and it was uncomfortable at first. We were not we were not used to disaggregating the data and for confronting the, the reality that there were very different outcomes uh, among our students when we, when we did that. Um, so, so I don't think we would have ever uh, begun the journey without our involvement in, in achieving the dream. For me personally, as the chancellor, what, what Achieving the Dream, we began, I became, I've been at Phillips forever, but uh, I, I became the chancellor in 2003. And uh, what, what Achieving the Dream has given me is a narrative and numbers. It's given me a story, a narrative that if, if we repeat it often enough, we begin to believe it and it becomes the institutional story. And then it's given me the numbers to support it because if you, if you don't have the data, if you don't have the numbers, then your faculty and staff just think that this is fiction, this is, this is presidential fiction. Um, and they don't really believe the story. So I, I think it's, it's given me personally the two things that I, th I think a community college CEO needs to, to effect change. You need a story and you need the numbers to, to support the story. I was an English instructor in a, a former life. Uh, our vice chancellor for instruction uh, has been an English instructor. So the notion of, of story became very natural. Um, it, it fit our sort of leadership style. And, and I think uh, effective leaders uh, often are people who, who tell stories. If you look at presidential campaigns, the, the successful campaigners are the ones that have the the elevator story that they tell over and over, and if they stick to, to the message, then people start to, to believe it. So, but the, the notion of using uh, story as a way of addressing the issue, I think, came naturally to us for, for those reasons. And then achieving the dream forced us to look at the, the data. Because I, I think, you know, as a community colleges tend to um, have anecdotal evidence, you know, we. We have these stories that we tell one another, uh, but the, the reality is that often the anecdote was, was the exception to the rule rather than the rule itself. So achieving the dream with its emphasis on creating the culture, a culture of evidence, sort of forced us to look at what the data said uh, our story was, whether our, our narrative was was fact or fiction. We tried something new this year by collecting student stories and some of your students jumped in to make videos and uh, maybe you could tell me a little bit about that effort, how you promoted it and, and some of the stories we got. Okay, uh, we were excited to see a, a couple of our students uh, submit their, their videos because one of the things that we know is that our students have compelling stories and, and uh, this was a way for us to capture those 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 stories. So we were excited. Uh, I really didn't have uh, uh, any confidence that one of our students would end up in the top ten because we are a small uh, community college, and there are some very large community colleges in the uh, in, in in the Achieving the Dream network. Uh, but one of the things that that I did was. Uh, uh, I posted on Facebook and sent an email to our college list and our, our college student list telling them that if one of our students got the most votes uh, that I would wear a sock monkey hat 
for a week to work um, in, in, in celebration of that. So uh, I, I think that might have generated a few votes. It was not enough to put them at the top at this point, but, but uh, it, it did generate some excitement. I had uh, one employee add to my collection, give me uh, a pair of sock monkey slippers to wear, wear as well, and the sock monkey jack in the box, and jack in the box. So all of a sudden, I've become a, a collector of sock monkey uh, paraphernalia. But uh, we were excited to have students, our students, tell their stories. Uh, it, we we um, have become encouraged to try to do that more often and capture most of our more of our students stories well i hope to see you wearing the sock monkey and <laughs> thank you so much for sharing really enjoyed you're it. welcome you're welcome thank you okay.